The New York Giants have announced their initial 53-man roster for the 2023 season and wanted to discuss that and, you know, wanted to wait to see how things shook out as far as any potential uh, claims, but Giants did not make any waiver claims. Now, again, like their priority, on the priority list, they were very low due to the fact that they, um, you know, had one of the better records last season. Uh, whereas last year, coming off of a season where they were low in the standings, they had the ability to acquire, you know, to get some guys via waivers. Uh, and who knows? I'm sure the Giants probably put in some claims, but they were beat to it. Like, for example, the Arizona Cardinals got six uh, players from claims. So, you know, let's discuss what this roster looks like. Again, it's the initial 53. Things will change, but I think I, I wanted to wait until I felt like it was going to be somewhat set. And I do think that we are there right now. And, uh, you know, we know most of the practice squad. I think we know about 14 of the 16 practice squad spots. So, you know, let, let's go position by position. Quarterback. No surprises here. It'll be uh, Daniel Jones and Tyrod Taylor. And, you know, Tommy DeVito really showed himself pretty well in, uh, in preseason. And he will be with the practice squad. And, you know, maybe, maybe look, next year when Tyrod Taylor is likely off the roster, maybe Tommy DeVito uh, is in play for the backup spot. You know, I think it's a little, a little premature to go there. But as far as Jones and Taylor, that was expected. Uh, running backs. The, the, the Giants have four running backs. A little bit of a, of a surprise with one of them. So you end up getting Saquon Barkley, of course, Matt Breida, Eric Gray, and Gary Brightwell. So Brightwell was one. I, I kind of thought he might have been on the outside looking in. But he ends up making it, and really due to his special teams prowess. I think that's a theme here, and it's something that I think we often lose sight of, is that you know there are special teams players that have that leg up, and Brightwell, who has been injured. That's the other thing, too. I thought the injury might impact his ability to make the team, but it didn't. And, and keep this in mind, too. Gary Brightwell is someone that was from the Gettleman regime. Uh, right now, you look at this roster, and it look I think, about... Maybe two thirds of it are are Shane players. You know, the only Jerry Reese player is, is Sterling Shepard. But I think about two thirds of the overall roster is approximately uh, Shane. However, when you look at the starters, that is still about fifty fifty. That is fifty fifty in terms of Gettleman and Shane at this point. But Gary Brown makes it over Jashawn Corbin, who. Looked pretty good. The, the, the numbers don't show up, but I thought he looked pretty good. You know, he was someone from Lat who was on the Giants practice squad last year, but he he was cut, and I believe he signed on to the Carolina Panthers practice squad, and they saw him firsthand in the second game of the preseason. Um, another name that had, that I had spoken about in a previous episode, you know, on, um, yeah, a previous episode was James Robinson, who clearly um, was not going to make this team, and he was released, and you know, no surprise there. Wide receiver. So you end up with six, and that comes with a slight caveat. Now, um, the list is Paris Campbell, Isaiah Hodgins, Jalen Wyatt, uh, Jalen Hyatt, Wandale Robinson, Sterling Shepard, and Darius Slayton. So Wandale Robinson was activated off of PUP. Um, before I forget, I think the only player that's still on the PUP list for the Giants, I think, is Aaron Robinson. So, you know, in, in case I forgot that when I got to the DBs, uh, let me just confirm. I think Robinson's the only one. Currently, um, yes, he's on the pop list. So, yeah, so wide receivers. Wanda Robinson activated off of pop. Sterling Shepard was, was probably a guy that was someone in the bubble, but showed enough well. Now, you know, he's at this point, I don't know how many, you know, snaps he'll get. You know, I, like it's hard to say. But Shep, you know, makes the team, which is impressive that he keeps on coming back. Um, you know, after injury after injury that he that he is on this roster, Cole Beasley is on the Giant practice squad. So I think Cole Beasley kind of had the inside track, but but had a leg injury, and I think that kind of affected his status here. But Beasley is someone who I would expect to be maybe elevated, right? Um, I think you have a maximum of maybe three or four elevations before you have to put someone on that 53-man roster. So we'll see what happens, but I'm sure Beasley will play his way on to this 
active roster, but for now it's six. Um, Jamison Crowder, um, he was cut, which again, it's a numbers game. Wasn't that surprising. And then as well, Colin Johnson was cut as well. And then Bryce Ford Wheaton, he was someone that could have made it for special teams reason, but he tore his ACL. Tight ends, no surprise here. Uh, Darren Waller, Daniel Bellinger, and Lawrence Cager. Um, you know, and, and I guess with Cager, this is what they wanted to do. Cager is kind of like a Waller light, if you will. And, and that could be risky in not having sort of the more of a blocking tight end. The Giants did cut Chris Myrick. Um, and I don't believe that he landed on the practice squad. No, he did not. Oh, no, sorry. He broke his hand. Sorry, Chris Myrick broke his hand. Uh, and I believe it was a season-ending injury. So... Tommy Sweeney is on the non-football injury list. So Tommy Sweeney, um, he is someone who, uh, I think there was a, a little bit of a um, a medical emergency that might have happened like last week or two. So Sweeney, we'll see. He, maybe he'll be in the mix at some point, but he is on the NFI uh, list. Now let's jump to the last offensive position, which is the O-line. The Giants are going to be carrying nine. And... Let's talk about maybe the six guys that were definites. Let me look at this. Yeah, there were six that were definites, in my opinion. Ben Bredesen, Josh Azudu, Mark Lewinsky, Evan Neal, John Michael Schmitz, and Andrew Thomas. So one of those guys won't start. We've, you know, that that you know, that could be a zoo. It really could be any of Azudu, Bredesen, or um or Glowinski, but I, I would think that. I hope Bredesen, you know, gets a starting spot. And so with that, my prediction is Azudo. Azudo is kind of someone on the outside looking in, but I think they might, might go with a rotation. Not sure how I feel about that, but that's where they might go. And so then the other three, yeah, three, is Shane Lemieux, which is interesting. Shane Lemieux, another guy who, you know, was part of uh, the Gettleman regime. I thought that he was on the outside looking in, but he had a, he had a solid camp, and, and and so he makes the roster. And you know what? Like the Giants, you know, w w in in the interior, there are question marks there. And Shane Lemieux is someone that is somewhat versatile. He could pivot to center if need be. So Shane Lemieux makes this roster. Marcus McKeithen was a someone who got hurt last year early on. Uh, he it was a fifth round pick last year. And so he makes this roster, and we'll see what he provides. You know, he's coming off injury, so I, I don't know what his role exactly will be. And then Matt Parrott is your swing tackle. That's kind of scary. Uh, and that, that's a definite, definite weakness. Uh, so if Andrew Thomas or Evan Neal goes down, Matt Parrott comes in. And Tyree Phillips was a cut, but he is on the practice squad. So Tyree Phillips, that was a bit of a surprise cut, but they were able to land him back on the practice squad, so, you know, expect to maybe... And he was dealing with an injury as well that set him back. So, we'll see. But, yeah, O-line, the depth is concerning, for sure. You know, and, and, and kind of wrapping up the offense, you know, I think that, you know, again, that O-line is going to be important. Wide receivers, there's a lot of depth there. Again, is it top-heavy? No. But, there's, but you definitely have a lot of depth. O-line, you're lacking depth. Let's go to the defense. Let's start with the D-line. So the Giants are carrying six. And really, five of them were obvious. One of them was, was you know, a guy that we weren't sure would make it. So the five that were obvious, Dexter Lawrence, Raheem Nunez, Rochez, Jordan Riley, the seventh round pick this year, Sean Robinson, and Leonard Williams. And then DJ Davidson made the team. Now, now, he was also coming off of injury. He got hurt in preseason last year. And he uh, was a sixth round pick. So Davidson does make this team. And, you know, again, D-line, like, that's a pretty solid line. Top to bottom, I would say. If, you know, because Ashawn Robinson has been hurt, and so I'm a little concerned about that. Same with uh, Nunez, Rochez. But I think that, you know, that should be a solid group right there. Now let's discuss linebackers. And that includes inside linebackers, outside linebackers, and even some special teams guys as well. Um, and, and an interesting cut that happened here, too. So first, want to make mention Boogie Basham was acquired from the Buffalo Bills, and this is where you know Joe Shane having a history with Brandon Bean, the uh, the Bills GM, comes into play. Because Basham probably was going to be a cut, and so by the Giants making this trade, they were first in line. They would not have got him. He would not have made it to them in all likelihood. At least they felt that way. And so Basham, uh, the Giants acquire him from the Bills. 
and the Giants, it was a late, it was a late round pick swap in 2025. So the Giants traded away their sixth and they received a seventh. Um, so not a huge cost, but at the same time, this is a guy that was going to be cut. So the Giants trade away their sixth, they receive a seventh. This is both in 2025. So Basham will be one of four um, of the de defensive ends, if you will, um, you know, edge rushers. It'll be Basham, of course. You have Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau and Jihad Ward. So what happened there was, and, and to me what's interesting is that, you know, Ward, I think Basham's kind of more of like Jihad Ward. Better against the run, not so much of a pass rush threat, more good in the run game. Um, so again, you are thin in edge. And so the Giants cut Timon Fox and O'Shane Zimenez, but both of them did land on the practice squad. So... You know, it, you know, the O'Shane Zimenez, like, again, like, the fact that he still remains, like, in some ways on this roster is interesting. Simone Fox, I thought he would make it, but again, with the acquisition of Basham, I think that kind of took Fox's spot out. But again, those are names to still keep an eye on as, you know, again, I think that that depth is thin and, you know, they might find their way on the roster at some point. Uh, let's quickly discuss a couple of specialty, likely special teams guys. Cam Brown and Carter Coughlin, guys that were 2020 draft picks. By Dave Gettleman, they remain on the roster. They will be on special teams. I would not expect either of them. Um, Coughlin would have the better chance of doing so in an emergency situation, but I would, ex I would, I don't think either of them will play defense. It'll just be strictly special teams. Um, Cam Brown, I thought that maybe his spot was in jeopardy again. He was injured, so it's funny. A lot of these injured special teams guys, a la Gary Brightwell, end up making the squad. Um, and then let's talk about inside linebacker. So, as discussed recently, you had the trade for Isaiah Simmons, and I think he'll mainly be on inside linebacker. He'll be versatile, but Simmons, Micah McFadden, new starter Bobby Okereke, and so that left, um, the, the, this was the first Joe Shane, uh, you know, last two seasons cut. It was Darian Beavers, but Beavers ends up uh, on the practice squad. So, like, that's the good thing is that, you know, you don't lose them. Um, I mean, it, it goes to show that they're not exactly valued across the league. So, right, there that, that comes with it. But it's not as if you, I mean, you could still make something of it. So, Beaver's not on the 53-man roster. And so, you're in, again, the inside linebackers will be the following. Uh, McFadden, Okereke, and Simmons. And that's assuming that, like, a guy like Coughlin doesn't, is not in that mix. And I, and I would not expect him to be, but I guess anything's possible. And now let's talk about the defensive backs. So again, so corner for me is a question mark position. Let's talk about cornerback specifically. Deontay Banks, Cordell Flott, Darnay, uh, Trey Hawkins, the rookie sixth round pick, Darnay Holmes, who took a pay cut, who took a pay cut in order to stay on this roster, um, and Dory Jackson. Now, Nick McLeod's an interesting one. Nick McLeod could play cornerback. Now, McLeod has been hurt. Uh, and so... You know, I wasn't sure what that was going to mean for him, but he makes the team again. He adds that versatility, but he's someone that we've seen more at safety, I think. But with the Giants have a lot of safety, so I think if McLeod can play some corner, that could be a good thing. Definitely, uh, Amani Awarie ends up get, uh, being cut, and he is on the practice squad as well. So Awarie on the practice squad. Another cornerback, Juman Green, is also on the practice squad. So. And I should have also mentioned Ryder Anderson uh, is might be somewhat of a, fil a familiar name. He is on the practice squad. And then Tyree Jackson for tight ends. Uh, so Anderson, defensive line. Uh, Tyree Jackson is actually a converted, he's a quarterback to tight end. He was, I think, recently with the Eagles. Uh, and so the Gi he latches on with the Gi Giants practice squad. We'll see what comes of that. And then there was one other interesting name, Dennis Houston, a wide receiver who was with the Cowboys is also on the practice squad. Um, but as far as, yeah, the corners go, that's a position of, uh, it's concern for me. Uh, Dory Jackson's now going to be, you know, playing nickel corner, and you're going to have the rookies on the outside, and uh, Deontay Banks and Trey Hawkins, you know, Darnay Holmes, of course, will be in the slot, and Cordell Flott, I think he's seen as a, uh, on the outside. Um, and, you know, I thought maybe he could have been effective as a nickel corner. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen, and we'll see where McLeod factors in. As far as the safeties go, um, you know, you're going to have your starters, Xavier McKinney and Jason Pinnock, and then behind them will be Dane Belton, um, Javarius Owens, the rookie who I think he's dealing with injury right now, but Owens, I think, looked decent when, you know, whether in training camp or in preseason. And then uh, Bobby McCain, who McCain, I think, is dealing with a concussion. 
I thought McCain was on the outside looking in. So, um, you know, interesting that he made it. Uh, a veteran guy who, you know, really was deserving of making it based on what his, you know, resume showed. But the safety position is kind of a deep one for the Giants. Again, depending on how you look at McLeod. So, uh, again, McCain makes the roster. So, now the uh, three special teamers was obvious. Graham Gano, who's just been fantastic as a Giant. Jamie Gillen, who I'm not a big fan of. The Giants, you know, gave him like a two-year extension or something, which I didn't love, but that's here nor there. And then the long snapper will be Chris, uh, Casey Kreider. Uh, and looking at the practice squad, if there was any names I forgot to mention, Deontay Johnson, who is an undrafted free agent inside linebacker, you know, maybe he'll be in the mix. Alex Cook, a safety, he's on the practice squad. Ryan Jones, tight end, and everyone else I had mentioned. So I think, like I said, there's a couple of more open spots for that practice squad. But, you know, I think that this giant roster is definitely better than what we've seen uh, in recent years. Overall, but 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 definitely, like I said, still some holes. You know, I, I look at that offensive line, edge, and cornerback, and look, and those are three very important positions. That's the thing. Uh, whereas I definitely see strengths and other, you know, definitely like again that that D line, you know, is pretty good top to bottom. You know, quarterbacks, no complaints. The running back room, I think you got some nice diversity and should be fine. The tight ends, although again, the, the composition may be a little bit iffy in terms of maybe having a little bit more of a blocking element, but I'm sure they'll try to get creative. Wide receiver, you got depth, maybe not so top heavy. And then, you know, like I said elsewhere, safety room, I think is again, pretty good all throughout, but the Giants are going to need some improvement to me. You got to stay healthy as far as cornerback, um, outside linebacker and offensive line. Like those three spots need to stay very healthy for the Giants to be effective. So um, we'll see if there's anything else that happens from here. Uh, again, like I said, there was that one trade for Basham, uh, for the, from the bills. And, you know, so, you know, him and Isaiah Simmons are more newer faces that will try to acclimate themselves early into the season. But, you know, again, looking forward to this giant season, big, big week one game, uh, Sunday night football home against the Cowboys, looking forward to it. And, you know, here's to hoping that this will be, you know, uh, last year was a really, really, um, surprisingly good season and hopefully the Giants can take a step forward in 2023.